Welcome everybody, I'm the Urban Watcher and this is Understanding Banish. This is the tutorial for those of you that want and kind of an overview of all the toolbars and uh, an explanation for how to get further in the game Banished. It's a very unforgiving game, it's very challenging. Everything you do in this game has a kind of a cause and effect. Now, this should be the last video of the basic tool toolbar explanation. Um, today we're going to be talking about the, uh, the removal and destruction tools and finally the resource production. The core of this is going to be resource production because uh, the uh, removal tools are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Okay, so the, let's get into it. Now, in Banished, the way that you can remove and collect resources immediately is by using the removal and destruction tools. So if you want to destroy a building, you can click on the first one of uh, FF9 and it's remove structures. Basically you highlight the building that you want, bam, and it goes away. The little uh, uh, hatchet and pickaxe sign is telling my workers that uh, you want to destroy that, take that down. Okay, so remove resources, which is number two, is a, is, is kind of a, um, a wide command to say anything that's there that can be removed picking it up so you you click it and everything that's in that square is going to be picked up so that means that your stone your iron your wood is going to be massively cleaned up and this is going to affect the environment uh, your this these are all old trees and old resources and you want to make sure that you you want to clear that out okay so I do this in the very beginning right around where the town is at and then I selectively take out all the stones and the iron so the next tool that we have here oh by the way the uh, cancel removal is the is number seven and you basically highlight there and it, you can undo everything that's this tool right here the next one is let's say that I wanted to for some reason keep all the uh, the stone and the iron because I thought it was pretty or something and I just wanted to remove the tree well you could do that you can go here and click just the trees and it'll leave the iron and the stone vice versa let's say I wanted to pick up all the stone let's say I needed stone and I didn't really worry about the uh, the iron we can highlight that tool and you can pick it up or the same thing can be done with the iron see it focuses only on the iron if you make a mistake on roads, and I have a couple roads here that need to be, that can't be taken out. Let's say that this is really, really ugly, and I wanted to remove that. Well, you can click on this tool and remove the road just like that, and it's gone. So there you go. That is the removal and destruction tool. It's really used later on in the game whenever you're remodeling or you're trying to uh, make room for maybe you wanted to take out a wooden house and create a stone house or make room this this is an these are important tools for remodeling really okay so let's talk about what we really came here to talk about which is resource production and resource production is pretty complicated you want to make sure that you you produce more than you use in in this game uh, woodcutters and forest lodge need to be together and they need to be away from your town and you need to designate an area that you will not be working in click on when you click on um, Forest Lodger, which is this this little one, it's number two, you can put it down and it'll show you kind of an area in effect. And what this means, if you want them to cut trees, and that's all you want them to do is click Plant, and that deselects it, and, and, the, and whatever's highlighted is what they're programmed to do. So they'll begin cutting everything down. And if you're not careful and you leave that to where what they're doing, they're going to deforest everything, and they're and they're not going to be able to uh, plant back. So if you want them to stop and just just plant, then you click on that, and that's all they'll do is plant. Uh, a good balance, of course, is just to have both of them on. Um, if you're in a pinch, you can just have them do nothing but deforestation and and worry about planting stuff later if you're in a building mode. And you want to keep them, like I said, far away, a little bit further outside of town and you want to create a collection point that's somewhere outside the circle and maybe move their housing in the, in, near there. That's, that's always a good thing. And create a path for them to be able to go in between all these places. So let, me, let me speed down the time. Okay, so the next one that we have, that is the woodcutter and the forester. So let me tell you what they do. 
So that is the Forester Lodge, and he's number two, and he cuts and, and, and three plants. The woodcutter takes the logs that he collects, and he turns them into firewood. And firewood can be used for trading, but more importantly, they're in the early game, they're used to fuel your houses and keep your people from dying off from from it being too cold. So this guy is really, really important throughout the entire game. He, he's, he's not only used for that, but he's just also used for trading. This is a very good commodity. I think that the trading of a log is a one-to-one, -one, so one log is worth one unit, and uh, a, a um, firewood is like one to three, so one log is worth three units. So it's, it's a decent trading tool later in the game. All right, so let's talk about an herbalist, and I talked about this in one of the early videos just because it tied in. Again, the herbalist and anything that has to do with hunting and gathering and woods uh, needs to be a little bit further away from town. You see these trees? These are much older, more mature trees. There's nothing else around it except this herbalist. It has an area effect. Let me, let me zoom out. You can see that the area effect, everything within that area effect needs to be in a population where nobody's hanging out except the herbalist. The herbalist, I have this herbalist's house right over here, a little bit on the outside of the effect, so it doesn't have to walk all the way to in town. It, it can deposit its items into this barn or this barn, okay? And the herbalist will create, it will begin to gather your medicine, and your medicine is will keep your health of your citizens up. Keeping your, the secret to keeping them mating and growing is to have them houses and making sure that they're happy and content. So this is part of keeping them uh, uh, healthy. Uh, the other thing here, which is the blacksmith, uh, let me get to the blacksmith in just a second. Okay, so yeah, the blacksmith, early game in the first maybe three years, you want to create a blacksmith because he's able to, uh, he's able to transform your iron and your wood into some early tools, and tools are important late game for trade. But uh, early on, if, if you don't have that many tools available for your people to use, your work is going to come to a crawl. And if it comes to a crawl, you could potentially, uh, everybody could potentially die off. And, and it's, it's really important that you have a blacksmith making a, a steady stream of tools for you to be able to use. Okay, so it's, it's very straightforward. One blacksmith, you can assign them there. He'll begin to produce that. Later on, once you begin a query, or, or a mine, you can take uh, the, the log and the iron and the coal to create steel uh, tools which uh, allow, allow you to use the, the tools longer and they're also worth more for trading. Um, in here, let's go next to the tailor. The tailor is important within the first two years because the tailor will turn your, your hide that, or the leather that you get from the deer, from the hunters, and they really need to pair together. If you if you expect to have a tailor, you really need to have a hunter because he provides meat uh, from the deers, and he, prov he, he, he provides the food, and he also provides the leather for your coats. And not having a coat will will reduce your produ production rates in the winter. Having a coat will allow your people to go out into the fields and work longer uh, during the winter time, and you definitely need that, you know. Uh, having an advanced, having an advanced, uh, uh, you know, having a, uh, a tailor that produces jackets that are better than your average will, will help you uh, uh, stay out there longer. So you, your first level, of course, is the, let's see if I can find my tailor. Well, I don't know where she went. Must have moved her. Uh, where did you go? Used to be on the opposite side. Ah, there she is. Okay, or he. So your tailor can choose to create a hide coat, which is a basic leather jacket, a wool coat, or a warm coat. It's a combination uh, between wool and leather. So if you think about that, it's it's much nicer to have like a leather exterior, but have it stuffed with warm wool on the inside. And these are the, you know, these use more resources, but they also cost more, uh, they're worth more whenever you're, you're going to trade them. You want to have a surplus of them. So let's talk about the, the tavern. 
the tavern is not something that you want to immediately post put him up after you have a lot of seeds and you have a lot of crops growing and you have a surplus of food uh, really the the items you're going to get from him come from the orchard so if you have traded if you have successfully in la the later game traded for um, all these different items and you were able to get more than just one thing for your orchard you can choose to grow peaches and there they'll grow peaches and then begin cutting the peaches and you'll have a surplus of peaches then you can come over here to your tavern and tell them I want you to make beer or ale from peaches and they'll they'll take the the peaches that you have stored and turn it into alcohol alcohol will for a population over a hundred will begin to make them happy it has really no real effect on anything uh, lower than that uh, taverns are important once you get into like three four five hundred six hundred people uh, so for every hundred people you want to have a tavern uh, available to you that's just a joke that's a good general rule late late game stuff a mine is very really easy simple to explain you put it on the sides of a hill and it produces you can get coal and you can get iron from it you can you need to increase your limits and remember the general rule for both the mine and the quarry when you put this down you're stuck with it this is this is all you have it's it's going to be an eyesore so you want to make sure you put it away from from people in a corner like i can't go this direction anymore so I'm going to fill up this entire area with quarries and mines, and that's it. Once I'm done with this, there's, that's it. It's not in the way, it's not in the center of town or anything like that. The same thing with the quarry. The quarry is this one. From the quarry, it will just collect nothing but stone, and that's really important. So this is where you get your stone, and when you're done, it's going to dig a big hole in the ground. It's just going to be really ugly, and you can't remove it. You can't remove building and the, the mine will be basically abandoned and and uh, it tells you the percentage of what's left so that's oh look I have nomads let me tell you alright so if we go to the town fo town people here you will see nomads 11 nomads requesting citizenship allow them to become citizens of Dallas you can deny them or you can allow them I, uh, you know, it's up to you. I haven't quite figured out the repercussions long term for having nomads in the game, but I've heard there are, they do have an effect. Even though they can provide you an increase of people very quickly, there is an effect on your population. I just don't know what that is just quite yet. Okay, folks. Alright, so this video has covered um, the basics of of uh, removal and destruction tools and it also uh, talked about resource production and I hope it's helpful. Uh, check back in the next video. The next video we're going to be talking about putting everything together and I will give you a tour of one of my later uh, cities and we're, we're going to talk about why I've placed things in a specific way and we're going to we're going to call that putting it all together and then finally the last video in this series is going to be kind of a um, and edit it down the first how to survive the first 10 days so check back for that if you're having issues keeping your po your population up or you don't understand how to breed animals or how to how to keep your people happy so that they can breed we're going to go through that in the first 10 days and uh, thank you know if you if you've enjoyed this video and or any of these videos in the series make sure that you leave a comment thumbs up and you know it's it's kind of the reward for us uh, I really appreciate it I'd love to hear from you if you want to connect with me personally I'm on Steam uh, the Urban Watcher is my handle so guys thanks for watching appreciate y'all I'm a man